Good morning, adventurers. Last time you guys saw us, we bought this beautiful gal that we're driving right now. She is a Coachman Leprechaun, orange beauty, straight out of 1975. We weren't really able to give you guys a proper tour of the inside and the outside in our last video, so that is what we are going to do today. We are driving to a park that's nearby. We're gonna pull over, give you guys a little look at this beautiful old gal, and share some of the uh, updates that we're planning on making. Oh. I'm just gonna pay attention to driving here. <laughs> In our last video, we also asked you guys for help naming this old gal. Boy, did y'all come through. Well, maybe our most commented on video. Ever, guys. ever, ever, ever. Jeez. My word, thank you guys so much. We are having a little tough time narrowing it down, yeah. but we've got some maybe finalists in our mind. Hopefully we'll be able to choose soon. She is actually all ready to go. Everything in her works. I think other than the shower, it's not hooked up anymore, but yeah. the family who had her previously had it in the family for three generations and they mm -hmm. took such great care of her. It's like a 70s time capsule on the inside. It's even the, the smell of like your grandma's house it, is basically what it smells it really like is. on the inside. This old girl is almost 45 years old, so of course she is not in mint condition. There is some cosmetic damage on the outside. There are some things that don't work, like the shower she mentioned. Mm -hmm. The engine needs some work, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Considering how old she is, she's in incredible condition based on other RVs that we saw that are from the 70s. Enough talking, let's go take a closer look. At a distance, it looks very good. The paint is actually really solid and it's all the original paint job. But when you get closer, of course, you're gonna see a lot of little cosmetic issues with the body. Some of the paint is a little bit faded. You've got spots where there are some dents and scrapes on the outside. There's other little spots of damage around the wheels. And the panels next to the doors on each side have these kind of stress fractures in the middle that look like they've tried to repair. I think those are just natural wear and tear that happens over time because I've seen other units exactly like this that have that exact same damage at those exact spots. Overall, she's pretty much rust free. There are a couple little spots in the front where you're gonna see a little bit of rust, but that was a huge selling point for us because a lot of them that are this old are usually have a lot of rust on them. When we bought it, the tires weren't in drivable condition and we knew that going in. So the first thing we did was take it to get all the seven tires replaced. So that's six tires because there's dual tires in the back and then we added a spare to the back. Under the hood is a Chevy 350 engine. From what we understand, these engines are very, very common. That's good because that means that finding parts for it and getting people to work on it is actually pretty easy. One cool thing, this was created here, right here in Missouri. So she lived a good life here in Missouri, but now she is officially a Texan. So I think it's only appropriate to move our little keychain over. This was a gift from my mother when we became Texas residents a few years ago. Seems pretty fitting on this keychain. Let's go see what's inside. Welcome to our little 70s time capsule. Isn't she a beaut? Believe it or not, almost everything in here is original. So this is the original cabinets, the original pine walls, it's real wood, original fridge, original kitchen. Everything pretty much is original except for the fabric here. So the family, I guess, replaced it. It used to have this <laughs> on everything, which is definitely the exact material my grandma's couch was made out of. So we'll start in the very back, which is this huge bathroom. We didn't expect it to be this big. The family, as we mentioned, doesn't have the shower hooked up because they didn't like using the shower in here. They would just use it on the campsite. So it was filled with storage. That's why it's kind of nasty looking right now. But we're gonna fix that up. We'll probably keep it in the same spot. It has a functioning toilet. It's a little gross, but mm -hmm. it works. Little sink and counter space, which is really nice. Maybe some of the coolest vintage wallpaper ever. <laughs> <laughs> This whole end of the RV is actually for storage. So there's a huge closet here and you can actually access that from over here as well. No more suitcase living for me. I might <laughs> actually have like a real closet. Sorry to burst your bubble, but this is where we're putting the whole solar setup. Our clothes part of a solar setup? <laughs> no, but you may still have room to put the clothes in here. To be determined, we'll figure it out. Okay, so next you walk out into the kitchen. We have a full on sink over here, which is also all hooked up and works. It's also a little gross. We'll probably take this out and get something bigger and deeper. It also has this 
beautiful retro stove, which we will likely not change at all because it is so silly. It does work. Like it does. Charm. It works. It's even got a very clean oven in here. I guess the family didn't do much cooking yeah, in we'll here. Yeah, we'll clean all this stuff up yeah, as well. But just, ah, how beautiful are all of these little dials here? It has plenty of storage space, all kinds of drawers and big old deep cabinets. Ugh. Oh, they even have little spacers in there. We can finally have pots and pans and dishes and everything. We actually have a huge fridge in here, this big old Dometic fridge. It actually doesn't smell too bad or anything. It's got, I think the freezer and everything even works. We will likely be getting rid of this since we want to do solar. We are thinking about getting a DC fridge, cutting this whole thing out and having a drawer that the fridge can pull out on. It'll take up a lot less space. We'll be able to put a counter surface here. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea is to take this out and have more counter space on yeah. top of it. And it'll open up the room significantly instead of having this big box here. So maybe too ambitious, we'll see. Yeah. And a lot of people say that getting an RV, they're like, oh, it's just a big money pit. That was even a name that someone suggested. They were like, hey, call it money pit. Um, <laughs> many people suggested yeah. that. Yeah, I think we're gonna actually pick that name. It has a yeah, nice I ring think to so. it. Yeah. yeah. But the way we see it, we were able to get a really good deal on this. We thought we would have to spend a lot more to get something even in this good of condition. So we have some more wiggle room in the budget to fix some things up and to work on the engine. Also, we just feel like there's a lot of value in the learning process. We love working with our hands, but we don't get to do it a lot because we travel full time and mostly just work on the computer. So this is a way for us to learn a lot more about carpentry in general, but we do understand it is quite an ambitious project, but we're gonna do our best. I think we're gonna open the windows a bit so we can get a little, <laughs> little cross draft going in here. <laughs> It's toasty. Woo. These are original windows, you guys. They're yeah. actually in surprisingly good condition. Back to the tour. So attached to the kitchen is the main living space. Right now they have it set up with the classic RV style booth and then a little sitting area over here. We are going to make uh, some substantial changes here. I think we're gonna remove this completely and put something that's a little bit more low profile. And then we're gonna put something custom over here. This one here actually slides out into a fuller bed. Whoa, there you go. <laughs> it's well, kind of clunky, much... but yeah. it actually works. <laughs> That's the smoothest that's happened. So that's why we're shocked right now. But you can see it is funky AF and feels like it's about to fall apart. <laughs> we like that functionality, but all obviously it's not implemented very well. So we're gonna have to take this whole thing out and then we're gonna rebuild um, something similar, but a little bit more modern. I drafted something up in SketchUp that we're going to attempt to build and fit basically the same size as what's here, but it uses the system of opposite slats where one can kind of slide out and extend, but then it can slide back in to make it this size that it is right now. This one here also folds down, but we haven't really messed with it and don't really know how it works. And as you can see, it's uh, it's seen better days. I don't know, I think they might've added this all afterwards. Our tentative plan is actually to take this whole section out and then we're just going to make a wooden uh, shelf right here or like a table. Then we'll just have chairs here that We'll make this into like our workstation. The idea is to open this area up, open the whole thing up really so that we have, so that it just feels a little bit bigger. The carpet is actually not original. We pulled some of it up over here. Whoa, <laughs> check that out. Is that crazy or what? And then actually under this is some like linoleum flooring. <laughs> yeah, we don't know exactly what's original. Yeah, but... I mean, maybe it was just this kitchen type of flooring, then they put this down and then they put this down, but they all, they just stacked it all on top of itself. <laughs> Whatever was down there, we're ripping it all out though, yeah. don't worry. Yeah, so I think we're gonna try to put on, you know, some kind of hardwood floor or something a little nicer. Check it out. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. More or less works. <laughs> it might kill you, but it might not. This is one of the main reasons we wanted a Class C RV, and that is because of this overhead cab sleeping area. There's no ladder right now, so it's a little hard to get up to. Do we trust it? I don't think we've both been up here yet. Nope, we oh, haven't. Bad. Go yep. for it. Just sure. go for it. Okay. Oh, yep. There is actually far more room up here than we thought that there would be. And the reason we like this design so much is because you're not losing any space with a big bedroom in the back. Yes. So instead we have all that room for the bathroom and for the kitchen and stuff like you guys saw. So there's plenty of room this way. <laughs> now, of course you wouldn't want to sit up here. No, you're you not can't gonna be really sitting up. sit up. But we used to have a loft bed in San Francisco when we lived there. We built a loft bed and lived in our closet for five years. It's almost harder oh, to down. get it out than it was to get it in here. I really can't remember how the hell we assembled this in this closet. Mm. So we're no strangers to uh, limited overhead space. Oh God. Now to get down without breaking our legs. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Woo! Oh geez, just went for it. <laughs> we're thinking of putting maybe a ladder over in this side. I don't know if it'll be permanent or something that we kind of take away and put back. We'll take out all these 
separate uh, little cushions yeah. and put in a really nice mattress. So that's pretty much it for the interior. The last thing we want to show you guys is, of course, the cab, the captain's quarters, Ooh. if you will. This thing is such a blast from the past. Oh my gosh. I love it. It's a little bit dirty, but that can all be cleaned up. There aren't many cracks or anything like mm -hmm. that. Lots of just cosmetic stuff that I think can be fixed pretty easily. Lots of uh, fake wood paneling, <laughs> which is one of our favorite things. Yeah. We've gotten the chance to drive this quite a bit. I mean, I made that five hour trip from Kansas City back down to Southern Missouri, where we are now. It was surprisingly comfortable. I think it's nice that you're kind of raised up off of the ground so your legs don't get as tired. Should I turn it on for him? Oh God, be <laughs> Check prepared. Check this out. Whoa! The exhaust needs some work, um, and I think what we're going to do... Let me turn it off because it's yeah, so loud. Yeah, let's do that. Um, but you can hear the AC. Yeah. We got that fixed, so we are, it's working. Yeah, so the AC is working. Um, that was the first thing we got fixed. A lot of people were talking about how these old vehicles are gas guzzlers, and a part of that is because the fuel mixture is fed by a carburetor. They don't really do that on modern cars anymore. They use fuel injection. So we are going to attempt to change this thing over to fuel injection because we're going to be driving it so much yeah. that the savings on fuel will probably add up and it'll be worth it. Yes. It's over a thousand dollars to make that change, but we got it so cheap that it's something that we can do without breaking yeah, the budget. We feel comfortable doing that. It'll be much better because we would like to take this up mountains into different climates and the fuel injector will be much better for that stuff. Yes. In fact, after this video, we are taking it straight to the exhaust shop mm -hmm. and they're gonna take a look at it for us. <sighs> breaker, breaker, one nine, niner, fiver, niner, sixer, canda cane. That's right, it does have a CB radio. I don't think that it is hooked up right now, um, so we probably won't be rehooking that up. But is it just a bunch of wires? Yeah, <laughs> but it does look cool. Yeah. <laughs> In our last video, a bunch of people were like, where's the seat belt? Because you couldn't see a strap on me. But it's down here, it's just a lap belt. <laughs> I didn't even know that that was a thing until we got in here. Yeah, I don't believe these are the original seats. So I think they just didn't. He said that he added these later. Right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, this blue doesn't quite match the uh, aesthetic, yeah, but, but it is a pretty sweet color. We though. love it. So that is the RV. That is what we are dealing with. <laughs> we know we might be in way over our heads, but we figured eh, we'll give it a try. Yeah, you know? We've been wanting to do this for so long. I still can't believe it's real, but a lot of you asked why we didn't get a newer model, but we really love the vintage vibe of this. We saw it online, we just fell in love. It was in decent enough condition where we could justify buying something so old. So we know there's the possibility we'll look back on it being a mistake or thinking we should have gotten something more modern or not been so ambitious. We don't know what the future holds for this thing. We're not gonna set out any hardcore plans or anything like that because it's just a fun experiment for us to try. Yeah. Maybe we'll crash and burn. I'd say there's a greater- Not literally. <laughs> not literally in it, but you, you, no. get, you get what we're saying. So this might be a more of a long-term project, something that we do off and on. Once international travel is more of a thing, maybe we'll travel in between it and stuff like that. So we're not setting up any specific timeline for it or anything like that. No. It's going with the flow, you know? This does not mean, some of you said, oh, is the adventure over? I don't know how you could call buying this not an adventure, uh -huh. P.S., but it is far from over. We just know that domestic travel is probably going to be a lot safer in the future, so we will be ready when that reopens. And then we will definitely still be doing international travel. Do not worry. Mm -hmm. To recap, first and foremost, we are going to get the engine up to snuff, get the exhaust looked at. Then we are going to fix some of the exterior stuff, and then we're going to start working on the interior, probably starting with just a simple project like making this bed that I showed you guys mm -hmm. earlier in SketchUp. Then installing solar panels, the compost toilet, getting it to the point where we can go off grid and just kind of take it wherever we want to. That's mm -hmm. probably the most important thing before we hit the road. Goodbye adventurers. We'll see you on the road.